himself. And God rejected them for a season. Y'all follow me? Yeah. Yeah. But it was for a season. And you got a lot of preachers and even the, the Roman Catholic Church were teaching that uh, the replacement theology. That the church replaced Israel. It's not scriptural. And the Apostle Paul warned us that when you read that 11th chapter book of Romans and uh, the ninth chapter, it'll help you out. But some people, they don't study the Bible, so they don't know this. So you got preachers in so-called word churches teaching folk that replacement theology. We didn't replace Israel. Y'all hear me? Amen. We are adopted into Israel. Amen. Jesus is a descendant of King David of the tribe of Judah by way of Mary, his mother. Y'all follow me? We're saved because we're in Say his name. Jesus. Jesus. That's the only reason we're saved. Out of Jesus, we lost. No, you weren't saved as an individual. You were saved in Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, you follow me? We've all been made to drink into one body by one spirit. You follow me? We are joined to God through Christ. Jesus is a Jew. <laughs> Y'all got me? So, that's how we became spiritual Jews or spiritual Israelites. Amen. God never rejected Israel to the sense that we thought or were taught through false Christian doctrine. Amen. They was only put aside for a season. Thank God. Amen. Why you say that, pal? Because if it had not been for that season, the Gentiles would not have had an opportunity to come in. Amen. Well, he said through the prophet, the people that were no people will become my people. Yes. Amen. Amen. To provoke, go to 11 chapter book wrong, to provoke Israel to jealousy. Did y'all get that? Amen. That's why God brought us in, to provoke them to jealousy. To make them shame. Amen. <laughs> so they'll claim their God again. Amen. And then the prophet said, and all of Israel shall be saved. So don't let nobody fool you with that lie. Don't let anti-Semitism get in your spirit. Please don't. Because if you curse Israel, God will curse you. Amen. Amen. Third chapter of Galatians again. I was trying to get away from this a little bit. And we're going to the third chapter of 2 Corinthians after that. and Because uh, I want to talk about something. It's in my spirit and I believe it coming from daddy. And, and I'm going to try to make it as, as simple and plain as I can. Because sometimes I believe my mind is a little, little more complicated than, than some people can grasp. Third chapter, 13, 14 verse. But well, I'm going to read down the 16th verse just, for, just because I like what I see. Christ has redeemed you and I from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. But it's written, cursed is everyone that hang up on a tree. That's in the law. Hello? It's written in Deuteronomy. That if a man is hung on a tree, he becomes a cursed thing. So when Jesus allowed them to nail him to that tree, that cross, he became an accursed thing. Not for himself. For a substitute for you and I. Because we were under a curse because of our ancestor Adam sinned. He was the first man. Amen. Hello? And then his wife Eve, they took that fruit. They took the fruit. Y'all heard me, didn't you? They just took a fruit. Just took a piece of fruit off the tree and ate it. And doomed all of us. All of us. Because <laughs> we were in Adam's lawns. And and the death that came on him came upon all man because of his sin, even though we had not sinned in his likeness. So it contaminated, it polluted our nature. Y'all understand that, right? See, some of us from the old school, we remember when they said, uh, don't, don't, be, don't have nothing because they got bad blood. Now they're talking about their nature was bad. And you know, old people say all the time, the fruit don't fall too far from the tree. 
Boy, you act just like your daddy. Y'all follow what I'm saying? So when Adam sinned, it corrupted his nature. Can I, can I use another word? DNA. So he, so he became programmed with sin when he was originally programmed with righteousness. So his programming changed. His operating program changed. And after him, all men died. Y'all got it? Death came from all mankind. The only two that escaped that, and they still about to come back and die, was Elijah and Enoch. Did y'all hear me? Enoch, Enoch was taken. Elijah was taken. So they got to come back and, and, and give up their body. So that, that's another story. It's a point of the man wants to die, and after that, the judgment. So don't let nobody try to twist it and fix it for you. Elijah and Enoch got to go through the way of the grave. They got to die. Because upon the man wants to die after that judgment. That sin nature. Now, when we realize that Christ took our place, then whatever came because of that sin, the corruption, the perversion, the lifestyle, Jesus, the Bible said, was tempted at all points as we are, yet, go ahead, without sin. Amen. The devil tempted him, tried. Sin is under three categories. The lust of the eye, lust of the and pride of life. Everything, every sin you could ever commit come up under one of those categories. Jesus was tempted in all three. Where? In the desert. He was not tempted after the death, he was tempted in the desert. Amen. The lust of the eye, lust of the and pride of life. And he triumphed over it. He gained the victory over. Some of us might need to go on a 40 day fast. Amen. So we can get the victory. Amen. But he did it all for you and I. Not for himself. Because he knew no sin. He was not born of the will of man or flesh or blood. But by the will of God. He was conceived by the Holy Ghost and the womb of the Virgin Mary. Mary had never known a man. She wasn't no young maiden. She was young, but she wasn't, she wasn't in the sense that the Bible tells you she was a young maiden. A lot of young women are not virgins. For what I'm saying. So we have to make, make it plain. And that's why Isaiah and in the, in the, in King James, the 7th chapter 14 verse, tell you that a virgin shall conceive and bear a child. But yet, yet the, you got some translation want to come back and take it out and say young maiden. Amen. No, there's a reason why the scripture under King James let you know it was a virgin. Hello? Cause it, just because a person is born into the world and no matter how good or great they might become, that does not mean they could die for your sins. Because their blood is contaminated. They got bad blood. You follow me? So the lamb that was going to be offered up had to be without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. Had to be without sin. But no man was without sin. So God foretold that a virgin, when he said in the third chapter of Genesis, the 15th verse, he said that the seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent seed. A woman don't have a seed. A woman has an age. She's an incubator. She's a birthing chamber. The woman don't carry the baby. The man's carried, the men carried the baby around. Then when it's time for the baby to come in the world, they deposit it into the incubator. Y'all hear what I'm saying? The child comes from the man. Yeah, get mad all you want. Cuss, <laughs> cuss, fuss, kick, scream, holler, throw your hair out, want to walk around with, with signs up. Go right ahead, but they ain't going to change nothing. You follow what I'm saying? Amen. It hasn't always rained either. <laughs> but it rained not on it. Amen. What that got to do with what you just said? You figured out otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> so when Jesus came into the world, he came free from the curse of the law. Because he had no sin nature. So Sin and the devil had no real power over him. Are y'all following? So when did he become sin? When did he become a curse? 
Everybody say it. On the cross. So he took our place on Calvary. Now, was that finished? Was it complete? He said it was. He said it is finished. So whatever the curse requires. My God, stay calm. Keep, keep, keep it there. Calm. Whatever the curse required, Jesus paid it. Amen. Did y'all get that? Look at that. Whatever the curse required of you, Jesus paid that. Lord, help me. I can't preach this. You're going to ease up on me a little bit now. <laughs> I'm about to start screaming and hollering and run up out of here. Look at Nathan tell him one more time what, what I just said. And those that were attentive and listened to the messages, they remember I read to you what the curse brought on me. Deuteronomy 28, chapter 15, verse on out. Amen. I read it to you, what the curse does to man. So if Jesus on the Calvary paid that price for you, you don't have to pay it. Thank you, Lord. Look at David and say, you don't have to pay it. It's already paid. <laughs> it's already paid. Sickness and disease is part of the curse. What you had to pay was to bear it. That was the cost of sin that you would have to bear sickness and disease. But since Jesus already bore it, that means he paid that price so that you don't have to be sick. So that disease cannot enter your body. Called the blood of Jesus redeemed you from that. Hey! Woo! Stay calm, stay calm, stay calm. Stay here, stay here, stay here. So Christ has redeemed you. Past it. But why am I still suffering with Because you don't know. He said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So I'm sharing with you the truth. Now you got Forget about what mom and daddy and the world and the newspaper, the doctors and all of them told you. They're observers. They only stand around observing what's going on and, and their reporter reporting what's going on. But we got inside information. The bill has already been paid. Miss Woodbury, you don't owe us no money. Amen. Your light bill already paid. Thank you, Lord. She there trying to work things out, and it's already been worked out. Yeah. You sitting there trying to work it out, trying to feel your way into it, trying to moan and groan your way into it, trying to fast your way into it, trying to give your way into it. And it's already been paid. Pastor, pray for me. Yeah, I will. <laughs> to impart to you something you already have. That's already yours. Amen. But I don't care how much of it's in my hand. If you don't believe it's yours, it's going to stay in my hand. <laughs> you got to receive it. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Glory to God. Already redeemed. Already given to you. Already been paid for. Mm -hmm, already been bought and paid for. And I'm just delivering. Thank God for the package. Amen. Thank God for the package. But that's, that's not the only thing that he redeemed us from. Sickness and disease. He redeemed us from poverty. Amen. Lack, shortage, not having enough. Yes. What you mean by that? See, if you study the law of redemption, 
you'll understand when a man waxes poor and he sells himself into slavery. That means he don't have anything anymore. Once he went into slavery, everything he does, whatever he gained and earned now belongs to his master. So you were broke. <laughs> but Jesus came. And the scripture tells us that though he was rich, yet for your sake, he became poor. Huh? That through his poverty, well, where did he become poor? On the cross. Not before the cross, on the cross. When he took the curse on himself, he gave up everything. He became poor. That through the cross, the redemption that was purchased by the cross, you are now made rich. So look at your neighbor and say, it's yours. It's all yours. It's all yours. <laughs> For all the narrow mind preachers that can't get it, yes, prosperity is part of the gospel. Yes, it is. Amen. Amen. So is the other part keep the commandments. Amen. Amen. Because <laughs> he's a gentleman hearken in his voice, do that which is right in his sight. And keep his commandments and walk in his statute, you'll suffer none of these diseases to come upon you. Did y'all get it? Amen. See, see, what we miss the part in, in a lot of times is that we want the benefits of what he paid for. But not understanding, unless you do what he said, you don't qualify to receive it. Amen. But I thought all we had to do was have faith. See, I'm, I'm working on some lessons about that. Those are those are verbs. Amen. Faith is a verb. Yes, it is. Trust is a verb. Believe is a verb. Aren't those action words? Amen. Anybody know what an action word is? You got to do so. So now what did God tell you supposed to do? <laughs> Keep his commandments. This is what he said. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now we get to the other part that the blessings of Abraham would come upon us through the Lord Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. So you got to go back. You can't just take that verse right there and run with it because there's some teaching behind how to receive the Spirit. He said, if you, keep my, if you love me, keep my commandments, I'll pray the Father. And he will give you another comforter that will abide with you forever. When he said he's going to give it to you? After you keep his commandments. They don't get that. But they want to leave that part out and they're catching something, but it ain't the right one. Because they call, listen, listen, he's called Holy Spirit. Not sexual spirit. Not, not that spirit. <laughs> you got what I'm saying? I might as well say it. Not homo spirit. He's called Holy Spirit. Not less spirit. Holy Spirit. Y'all got what I'm saying? Amen. Hello? I'm trying to think of that new word they got now. Non-binary spirit. <laughs> Y'all got what I'm saying? He's called the Holy Spirit. So this is what we, we missed out on. We want, we want to claim some of the promises, but we got to understand what we claim it. Amen. Amen. The book said in the third chapter of the book of uh, 1 Corinthians in the 15 and 16 verse that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Huh? Yes. And whosoever defile God's temple, him shall God destroy. Did y'all what I said? 19, 19 verse 6, child book of 1 Corinthians said that you're bought with a price. Huh? The blood of Jesus. So glorify God in your body and in your spirit. 
<laughs> Hello, I heard somebody say to me one time, they said, God don't look on the outward appearance, he look on the inward appearance. I want to laugh at him. But I said, you know, the Bible said he knows he's by the fruit you bear. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. An evil man bring forth evil fruit, and a good man bring forth good fruit. I say, by their fruit you shall know them. <laughs> Even I say your character. So God does look at what you do and what you look like and what you acting like. Don't let nobody fool you. He said, cleanse yourself not only from the filthiness of spirit, but, but flesh, but also spirit. So why, why did Paul say you got to clean yourself from the filthiness of flesh and spirit? Because God looking at both. Every man should give an account of every out of word and every out of deed. Uh -huh, we all go answer to God for what we said and what we did. Amen. So don't let nobody fool you. Amen. You ain't going to get out of that. Amen. Amen. We, that, we that are faithful to God, we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. And we're going to be rewarded according to our deeds. Then at the end of the story, called a great white throne judgment, all the dead go stand before Christ. The living and the dead. And all of us go be judged. And whoever's name not found written in the Lamb's Book of Life yeah. will be cast into the lake of fire. And they shall be tormented forever and ever and ever. Mm. So don't let nobody fool you. Amen. If you want to receive this, it's something you got to do. Yes, it's already laid out there on the table. I go down to, uh, I went to Thunderbird yesterday. Before I ever got there, Saints, the, the buffet was already prepared. Amen. Sam, mm -hmm. sit back down. Y'all didn't, <laughs> didn't even get there. I didn't get there until after 2 o'clock. Before I got there, the buffet, the, 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 spread, the table was already spread. Thank you, Lord. you follow what I'm saying? And, it was, and when I walked in the door, but Larry, I was looking at it, yes, sir. and it was spread. <laughs> but it was something I had to do to get to that spread. I had to make an exchange <laughs> that qualified me <laughs> to receive <laughs> from that table. <laughs> And God knows I received <laughs> from that table. <laughs> Amen. But we all want to come down at the Lord table, but we don't want to. What is it? I have to put my faith, my trust, my confidence in him. And you can't tell me. You trust somebody, you don't believe what they say. You're lying to yourself and to them. Amen. And you become self-deceived. And there's no worse condition to be in than self-deceived. You hear what I'm saying? So I chose to believe what he said. Amen. And he told me to get into this. I had to deny myself, take up my cross, and follow him. Y'all got that right? Yes. I chose to believe what he said. Huh? And he said, in order to get this, I had to deny myself, take up my call, and follow. And get what happened? I received the Holy Ghost. Amen. Look here, you got away from him. Come on and bless him. Hallelujah. Now, I, it wasn't no better of better roses. After I received the Holy Ghost. But this is why I want to. I, I, I didn't want to get too deep into it. But I'm on my way. So I might as well. <laughs> you know I'm getting a little. So I ramble a little bit. But folks found out in my rambling. Is the answer to their questions. Sure. So my father in the gospel had told me. That the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Was the pinnacle of the temple. Once you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You had it all. Well. I'm going to tell y'all something you may not know this. You had it all when you got born again. But you didn't know how to access it. So when you get the Holy Ghost, I told you this Wednesday, I told you before, that he guides you in all truth. He teaches you of all things. He takes of the Lord and reveals it to you. 
and he shows things to come. He'll not speak of himself, but whatever he hears, that he goes speak. Amen. So why is the Holy Spirit with here to help me be all that God called me to be? Uh, for as men as are led by the Spirit of God, Romans 8 and 14, they are the sons of God. Y'all got this? So the Holy Spirit is teaching us how to be who God says we are. Yes, Lord. And who God made us. Amen. You getting this? So now, you'll never become that until you do what the Holy Spirit says do. Amen. You got people who want to claim to be called to preach. Well, every child of God is called to preach. Yes, sir. Not every child of God is called to be an apostle, probably a evangelist, pastor, a teacher. But all you're supposed to be preaching the gospel. Amen. Amen. He said all the disciples go in the world and preach the gospel. He said all this I can go there for and teach all people. But not, not, not everyone is called to be apostle, prophet, man, pastor, and teacher in the body of Christ. For that ministry is to the body of Christ, not to the world. Y'all got what I'm saying? So you got people that, 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 that want to uh, claim but don't qualify. Amen. Look at your neighbor. They want to claim it but not qualify. See, many are called, but few are chosen. And some don't even realize that even after you're chosen, you got to qualify again. You got what I'm saying? What's that? What's, what's the You're going to be trained. Then once you're trained, then God will send you. So a lot of folk got called and they went. A lot of folk got chosen and they went. Y'all got what I'm saying? So now let me tell you what happens. He calls you, you qualify yourself to be chosen. Then you're chosen. How do you qualify between call and chosen? Guess what? You got to humble yourself, take his yoke upon you, and learn of him. How many of y'all, how many of y'all know that folk been in the church saying they saved 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years and never read the Bible all the way through? Never read the Bible all the way through. They don't know what the Bible actually teaches. Something wrong with that. But that's not why I'm stopping it. So you got one that said, well, now God called them to preach. And they're not talking about just to go out and preach the gospel. They're talking about preach to the congregation. That's another level. That's another level. God's not going to put a novice over his people. You follow what I'm saying? You don't even know the Bible and you're going to get up and preach to the saints of God. What you gonna tell them? Amen. You can't talk to a son on the street and know that you can't tell them what the gospel is because you don't know what it is. Amen. But you want to preach from the pulpit. <laughs> oh, to the saints of God. Amen. Hello? Amen. You know who you told to feed the flock? Pastors. Right. Shepherds. The elders. Amen. Don't make me go here and show it to you. You ought to know enough. You're in my home. <laughs> so so that means that in order for a person to get up here and preach to the congregation, they got to be knowledgeable. Amen. They cannot be ignorant of the scripture. Okay. Hello? Amen. But that's not that's not us. Well. <laughs> we get called and we go. We don't want to qualify. Then once you get qualified, then God chooses you. Once he chooses you, then he may choose you to be apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. And let you know what that is. Amen. Give you a little taste of it. Amen. You ain't ready yet. Amen. That's what I'm saying. Amen. You got to qualify again. Yep. You got to go through another training. Amen. And the, the major training right then is called P-A-T-I-E-N-C. I think it was patience. That's the major training right then. Because you know now you think you got something. <laughs> then you gonna get them. Then you gonna get them. Them well wishes come. They gonna say, "Why he holding you back? <laughs> Why is she holding you back? Yeah. You ready? Ready for what? You ain't want nobody to the Lord yet." Amen. I'm so thankful for my father in the gospel. He told me the proof that God called me, ordained me, and sent me that I'm gonna win people to Christ. They gonna Amen. follow me. He said, "If you ain't got no following, you ain't called." He really told me that. And I, I had Jesus following me before I ever got to church. Why? Because the man of God told me I had to qualify. Right. So I qualified myself. I proved myself. Amen. Look. What did you prove? That this works. 
I got in the book and learned the book and went out and shared it. Folk got delivered, people got saved, demons were cast out. Hello, somebody. Blind, saw, deaf, hears, dumb, spoke, lame, walk. Miracles were happening. You know what I'm saying? Folk would so, so start want to follow me, so I had a Bible class. Forever, you know, I formed, had a Bible class, started teaching Bible class. Thank you, Lord. Then after a while, I answered my call and told Pastor, I want, I'm ready now. So he put me forward with saints. They got convicted. They didn't want to hear me no more. I was mature enough to talk to the saints now. What did you tell them, Pastor? I told them that you're either an imitation, you're a real Christian or an imitation Christian. <laughs> That's the first message I preach. A real Christian or an imitation Christian? Them folk wanted to eat my lunch. I walk with nothing but book, chapter, and verse. You follow what I'm saying? I proved this thing. It works. But the next thing after that, then, then God will send you. And I used to think when God send you, then you go. No. He tells you where he's going to send you. Then you got to wait again. He tests you and tracks you out again. See if you can stand the test. Mm -hmm. He start putting fire on you then. Start taking the fellas, start taking the fellas out the nest. <laughs> Hello, somebody. He don't answer you as fast as he used to answer you. You don't feel him like you used to feel him. Just see if you gonna give up. See if you gonna stop. Are you gonna do what he say do? Cause he said do it. If you ain't give God a wave off, come on and bless him. So then after you qualify that, I, I didn't even talk about the, the giftings, but during the period of time, that, that those transition, you start experiencing the giftings. So now that you qualify, then he'll send you. Go. you say go. <laughs> now it's time to go. But you know what? He holds the keys of David. He opens up a door that no man can shut. Amen. And shut up a door that no man can open. See, a lot of folk, people, he said go, but they went on their own. Jesus. They didn't wait to see where he said go to. Amen. You got what I'm saying? Because, see, see the, reason, the reason why they didn't wait, because they still hadn't completely let patience have a perfect work. Amen. See, they were still caught up in feelings and emotions and flesh. You remember the, the sin of the, the sin, the principles of sin? You remember what God said concerning a novice becoming an overseer? Why he shouldn't? Because he could fall into that great transgression. A lot of folk don't know what that is. That's being lifted up in pride. That's what happens. So you get to thinking more highly of yourself than you should think. Hello? You know how many people that wrote books about their visit to heaven? Mm -hmm. Have y'all read my books? I got three or four of them. Did you see anywhere now I talk about going to heaven? Nope. I've been there multiple times. Amen. That's not a brownie point. Experience don't cause you to have faith. Woo. Experience puts a bigger burden on your shoulder. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus said to Tom, how blessed are they yes, that shall believe oh, and have not seen. So you need to understand that. A lot of folks boasting and bragging about they, they visit to heaven. I've been to heaven. I've been in the council of the Lord. I walked the prophets. I walked with Jesus, talked with Jesus. Jesus talked with me. One time I was there, I fell, on, I fell at his feet and started crying. I said, Lord, when I saw you, I said, I'll go fall at your feet and kiss your feet. And, and I got, we've been talking. We've been walking around here. You've been talking to me. And I ain't never once fell and kissed your feet. I thought I was there. I'm talking about this. Yeah. I'm for real. That's how real it was. That's how real it was. I came out of the spirit and was crying. My body was crying. My tears were running down my face. I said, oh, I wasn't there yet. <laughs> I, know, I know what I said, Lord. I'm going to kiss your feet when I... Yeah. But that's how real it was to me. Some people got folks around here talking about, no, it's a burden. What do you mean? Will I make it? I don't know how long it is between now and then. 
Y'all you know what I'm saying? Jesus. And what I got to go through between now and then to get back there. So it's not, it's not what people think it is having those experiences. I've seen angels. Little angels, big angels, <coughs> monster angels. <laughs> Amen. I've seen demons. You understand what I'm saying? But have you ever seen in one of my books in, that I wrote mm -hmm. me talking about my personal experience? Nope. You know why? Look at neighbor say it was personal. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. But in this world we live in and everybody trying to make a name for themselves off of their so-called spiritual experiences mm -hmm. and have no fruit. They have no fruit. There are preachers calling themselves apostles and bishops and everything that got saved and calling the ministry from them. A lot more even own me. Y'all follow what I'm saying? But do you see me running around here talking about I'm this, I'm that, and I'm that? Why? Because that, that don't give me no brown points for that. What gives me brown points for that? My faith, my trust, my confidence, my yes, belief Lord. in him. So now, I said all that to get you today to help you understand the most valuable thing is your faith in what he said pertaining to you. So now, even though the Lord became poor that I become rich, how do I get into his wealth? Look at your neighbor and say what I just told you a few seconds before that. Through my faith, my belief, my trust, my confidence in him. That's the thing that people don't want to pay. Specious, specious. Especially, especially. We want everything dropped on us like ripe cherries off the tree. Uh-huh. This this society done messed us up. We 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 didn't become what, what say it, y'all. Enabled. Yeah. We didn't become enabled. We we think that because we and, and and I'm gonna tell y'all about that one that y'all love so much you put in office. He, he, this is his words on words. I listened to the black conference. I, I, I'm the black conference. Him having the meeting the black conference. I heard him say it out of his own mouth. I've done all I'm going to do for y'all. Y'all not the majority anymore. The minority. Y'all know what that means, right? They got another class that's a minority that they won't focus on. They don't need you anymore. You gave them what they wanted. The money. By creating all those entitlement programs to be channels and funnel for them to steal money from the middle class and funnel it into their pockets. Yep. You've done your job. Yep. So now they're kicking you to the curb. Yeah. You played your game. Yeah, you played your part in the play. Now they're pushing you to the side. Your season is over. <laughs> they let the borders down yep. to bring a slew of them in here. To replace Why pastor Why Why are they replacing us Good question uh -huh. Your lack of faith in God Has opened the door For the devil to do that to us We gain everything that we gain in this society Through Preachers Yes, we turn our back on the preachers yep. who represented God to us mm -hmm. and start looking to DSS, mm -hmm. SSI, mm -hmm. SSA. Wow. Y'all come on up with it. You can keep on saying it. <laughs> yep, government entire program. Yeah. The food stamp industry. Cause what? The enemy has always offered his victim what he wanted. It was the bait to get him in the trap. And when we took our faith out of God as our provider and put our faith in the system to provide for us, and the system is the beast. I've been saying that since the late 70s. The system is the beast. And when you got connected, the beast said, I don't need you no more. Because the beast don't have a moral code. It don't have a sense of right and wrong. It has a sense of what is necessary and what is not. 
And once you become no longer necessary, it discards you. Amen. And now it's discarding us. And we, we were so blind, we couldn't even see how they were setting us up to hit the streets and be stupid. They got your face. They got your voice print. They got you. So once they get ready to shut you up finally, they're going to pull all that up. Yeah, you was among them. You thought you got away. But they were pushing you up to do that. To get you out there. So they can have a record on you. Let me leave that alone before they come up here and try to get me for warning y'all. Which they can't touch this. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But God wanted us to build our faith in him. You can't even get the Holy Spirit except through faith. Amen. And I showed you that the seventh chapter of Matthew says good things. But when you go to the 11th chapter of the book of Luke, it says the Holy Spirit. So what God is trying to tell you in order to get them good things is through the Holy Spirit. Amen. When God created the tangible world, it was the Holy Spirit that moved on the water. He was the one that called the word to take shape and form as land. Y'all got what I'm saying? Amen. So even though the material in your life is there to make your money, your income, your whatever, it can't come together for you because you don't have faith in. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Do y'all know what hope is? Expectancy. So if your expectancy is in the Lord, then he say you won't see. Why? Because you ain't looking at that. You know, you won't see when inflation and depression and all that stuff come. You won't see when shortage come and lack come. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. It won't even enter your mind because right. you won't see because you're not looking at that. You're looking to the Lord, your shepherd, who said you <laughs> shall not want. And that next verse says what? He maketh me. Now some folks don't understand that that lie down in plenty. Plenty, plenty, plenty. Yeah, Lord. He maketh me to rest in plenty. Hey. 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 Then he said, then he said, he prepared them ones that were trying to steal it, them ones that try to take it away from you, those government taxes and all that stuff they try to take. He prepared a table before you and the presence of your enemy. <laughs> then he goes on gets a little excited and he said what is it and he anointed my head with all so them devouring things that have tried to come along and snuff me out and try to take my life and try to overwhelm me God and put that all on me now when the enemy comes out against me like a flood the spirit of God will lift up a standard Can't get in my nose. Can't get in my eyes. Can't get in my ears. Because I'm covered under the anointing. Bad reports won't get in these. <laughs> hey, clamming in Christ won't get in these. A thousand will fall at my side and ten thousand at my right. But it shall not. <laughs> And my cup run it over. Why? Because I put my faith and my trust in God. And when he redeemed me, he blessed me with faithful Abraham. And I have received the spirit because I trusted God and believed in him. Now the Holy Spirit is taking up residence. He's with me and upon me. And he goes before me. He comes up behind me. <laughs> Look at your neighbor. Say you're redeemed. And you have been given. The Holy Spirit. God. In the presence. Is that how you say it? Present. God in present. I'm trying to say right now. You know right now God. Not yesterday tomorrow. But the now God. That's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, now, I gotta wait till you come in here. Right now. Oh, Lord. <laughs> 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 now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The anointing that removes every burden. Now. 
The Lord will drive cancer out your body now. The Lord will give sight to your eyes now. The Lord will open your ears now. The Lord will make your bones right now. <laughs> Woo! I ain't waiting on you to come. He's here now. He's a right now God. A present help. You may say a present help. <laughs> you know what Jesus said? They said, I'll not leave you helpless. Didn't he? Look at your neighbor say, remember. The cause of the redemption through Jesus' blood. You got a God that's in your now. You ain't got to pray all night long. Fast all week long. He's an ever present here. He's an ever present here. When? Now. Now. Let us pray. Father, we're so thankful. We're so grateful. So appreciative. Thank you for the word. Thank you for the revelation knowledge. Thank you for the inspiration of that word. Let that word work powerfully, mightily in their spirit, in their soul. Let it transform their outlook on things. Let them no longer walk like ordinary men, but as the children of God. But the God that is in the now. So that those around them will sense you and be convicted and say, you convinced me of sin. What must I do to be saved? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for making all this possible. In Yeshua's name. Everyone said amen. amen. And amen again. Amen. That's the God we serve. Now. That they may know that you are with us. Amen. Amen. I'm not going up if you don't go up with me. So how will the people of the world know that you are God? Except you go with us. So you got all of you running to my Jesus and my God, Jesus and my God, but Jesus ain't nowhere around. That's why they don't believe. That's why they don't believe. You need to get that disconnect straight now. Then he'll go to the job with you. He'll go to the grocery store with you. He'll go to the gas station with you. If you got to go to court, he'll go to court with you. You know what I'm saying? He'll go there with you and be your advocate. And then a seed for you. But you got to get that disconnect straight now. Amen. You can go to the doc and the doc look at you and say, I don't know what happened to you, but something done happened because I'm looking at the x-ray and I'm looking at you. And I, 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 I. You sure you're the same person? You say, yeah, doc, but I... I made a, a side trip. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I stopped by Dr. Jesus first. And Dr. Jesus fixed me, so now I don't need what you got. But thank you, thank you for your services, and I appreciate you confirming what Dr. Jesus already told me. Yeah. Yeah. I went to the loan company one time. Didn't take Jesus with me because Jesus was trying to steer me elsewhere. So I didn't listen to Jesus and went to the loan and sitting there. And she said, what's your name? I said, Anthony Clawson. She, she paused for a minute. Then she said, uh, uh, what's your name? I said, Anthony Clawson. If you want something, you need to speak up. She's sitting right there. I'm sitting right here. How you don't hear me? What's your address? So I gave him my address and she said, uh, now I told you if you want something, you need to speak up. I said, ma'am, I can go to the bank and borrow more than this. I just need this little bit. I'll come back Friday and I'll go pay it back to you. I said, but with your attitude, thank you. I don't need it. I can come walk out the door. <laughs> now I went to the post office, opened the drawer, a $2,000 check. Laying right there. 
And all I wanted to borrow was three hundred dollars. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I'm there being talked down to when I should have went on to the mailbox to trust that God went to the mailbox to start with. I would have never had to hear all that negative talk and be, be tempted to slap somebody. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Yeah, I felt like, who are you talking to? You don't know who I am. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Yeah, but thank God. I took Jesus. Even though he was trying to steer me to the mailbox, I kept trying to steer there. He didn't let me down. I went to the mailbox after I walked, got up and walked out. Maybe he was the one that definitely did. What do you think, like? It might have been the Lord put that plugs in her ear when she couldn't hear me. Let me know. You don't need this. I got you. He's a now God. He's a now God. He's a now God. The blood has been shed. The price has been paid. Stop worrying about the future. He's a now God. I shared with you last week. He said to Martha and Mary, I am the resurrection. I'm a right now God. So stop trying to put this stuff off in the future. He's already gave it to you. The only thing stopping from manifesting is you. You putting it off in the future and God said now. But did he say all his promises in Jesus are what? Wait. Maybe. Someday. After a while, in the sweet by and by. No. He said all his promises in Jesus are yes and so be it. God bless you. Heaven smile on you. God bless you. Those are my real, uh, social media. We appreciate you. Become a part of this ministry. I, I don't do a whole lot of soliciting, but you need to become a part. You need to tap in. Amen. Amen. You need to tap in so that that anointing can flow on you. Amen. We had a testimony. Someone shared it. They're not here, but I'm going to share it. They said, and I tell you all this all the time. When you get up under my covenant, and, and everything can't be happening to you unless you're being stupid. So the child wasn't feeling that, that too, too perky, too, too good. They brought the child. They pressed their way. They brought the child anyway. Is that what I said? God stepped in and delivered. Amen. Ain't God good? Ain't God good? All the time. How, how, how many times? He don't never miss out. He ain't never late. He's always on time. Always. You ever heard that saying? Stop singing that song. May yeah. not come when you want him. But he'll be there right on time. Sit down though. If he don't come when you want him, how is he on time? If I call Uber and Uber tell me they're going to be there in 10 minutes and I got to be somewhere five minutes after they get there in 10 minutes and they don't get there 10 minutes that they said, I'm not going to get where I need to be at, you know, you know what I'm saying? So that ain't on time. That late. Why quit saying that song? Now for his. When? Now. Where's God at? Here. Right now. Hey! Tap in, tap in, tap in. Lord will nothing happen. We'll see you Wednesday night. God bless you. So, 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 Bob.